title of my paper is role of mr imaging in the evaluation of children with developmental delay aim was to study the role of magnetic resonance imaging in the evaluation of children with developmental delay development is a complex and continuous process of maturity which begins from conception and continues up till maturity parallel to growth of children however during this process a wide range of etiologies including genetic metabolic endocrinal vascular malformation syndromes traumatic infectious toxins and en environmental causes can have adverse effects and cause delay in achieving developmental milestones clinically development can be evaluated using four domains which are gross motor fine motor social and language skills developmental delay is defined as a significant delay that is more than two standard deviations below the mean in one or more developmental domains it has significant impact on the quality of life of the child affected motor and cognitive development observed in infants and children are considered a rumination of postnatal brain development myelination and synaptogenesis are thought to have correlation with the process of postnatal development the biological correlation can be very well studied using various neuroimaging techniques especially magnetic resonance imaging magnetic resonance imaging of brain is the modality of choice in investigating infants and children with developmental delay Many studies have reported significant percentage of abnormal findings on MRI brain in children with developmental delay. The uh, abnormalities leading to developmental delay can be easily defect, uh, dis detected on MRI imaging in most children. So, ours was a prospective study conducted over a period of two years, from September two thousand nineteen to July twenty twenty one, with a sample size of hundred cases. Patient was positioned in a uh, supine. position with head pointing towards the magnet the patient is asked to lie supine and not to move during the study head was positioned in head coil and immobilized with cushion laser beam was uh, local laser was centered over glabella planes used were axial coronal and sagittal and the sequences used were t1 weighted imaging in axial and sagittal planes t2 weighted imaging in axial and coronal planes flare uh, imaging in axial plane T1 weighted inversion recovery sequences in axial plane, diffusion weighted sequence in axial plane, and susceptibility weighted imaging in axial plane. Out of 100 children with developmental delay, 50 were female and 50 were male. Out of which, 62 percent were in the less than one year age group. Out of which, uh, 30 were male and 32 female. 22 percent were in the one to five years age group, of which 12 were male and 10 were female. 16% were in the 6 to 16 years age group out of which 8 were male and 8 were female so coming to clinical features 15% of the children had global developmental delay 27% had uh, motor delay 33% had uh, cognitive delay 41% had social delay 23% had uh, speech or language delay 7% had uh, seizures and 56% of them had perinatal insult About sixty-two percent of the children with developmental delay had abnormal findings on MRI. Thirty-three percent of the children had uh, periventricular leukomyelia. Twenty-nine percent had encephalomyelia. Twenty-four percent had corpus callosal dysgenesis. Eight percent had Dandy Walker spectrum. Eight percent had lesencephaly pachygyria. Nineteen percent had leukodystrophy. Fifty-three percent had delayed myelination. Twenty-four uh, percent had uh, isolated atrophic changes. 5% had infection association associated changes and 46% had had hydrocephalus here we can see figure a b and c showing t2 axial flare axial and t2 coronal images with uh, periventricular t2 hyperintensity predominantly in the peritrigonal regions and few cystic lesions were also noted within them these findings are suggestive of periventricular leukomyelia here we can see a flare axial image of a case of davidoff uh, dike mason syndrome which shows left hemiatrophy and the presence of cystic encephalomyelia figure b is a, of the same patient and is a sagittal t1 image which shows evidence of uh, corpus callosal thinning and figure c is a flare image of a patient with presence of bilateral parietal lobe hemi uh, parietal lobe encephalomyelia here near symmetrical altered in signal intensities appearing hypointense on t1 weighted imaging hyperintense on t2 t2 weighted imaging and flare imaging predominantly in the bilateral periventricular white matter and in bilateral subcortical white matter in sorry in certain areas and features were suggestive of metachromatic leukodystrophy 
Here we can see T2 coronal image, which shows bilateral shallow sylvian fissures and axial T1 image, where cerebral hemispheres show abnormal outline with simplification of the sulcogyral pattern and reduced number of cerebral sulci, which appear shallow. There was also thickened cerebral cortex and findings are suggestive of pachygyria with possibility of torch infection. Here we can see a sagittal T1 weighted imaging which shows a dilated third ventricle with a normal appearing fourth ventricle and thinning of the corpus callosum. Axial T1 image shows dilatation of the bilateral lateral ventricles and diagnosis was hydrocephalus which was secondary to aqueductal stenosis. Here we can see a T1 axial image of a patient with Dandy Walker malformation showing hypoplastic vermis. And figure B is a T1 serial image of the same patient showing cystic dilatation of the fourth ventricle with the connection between the fourth ventricle and the uh, enlarged posterior fossa with cephalic rotation of the remnant of the vermis. So developmental delay was coined to be a descriptive term for impaired adaptive functioning and sub-average intelligence arising during developmental age group that is less than 18 years of age. Children with developmental delay may demonstrate delay in one or more of the following domains, which includes language delay, gross motor delay, fine motor delay, or social delay. These children may also tend to exhibit behavioral disturbances such as aggression, self-injury, inattentiveness, defiant sleep disturbances, stereotypic behaviors, or difficult temperaments. On neurological and physical front, they can present with micro or macrocephaly, seizure disorders, antenatal history of IUGR, or postnatal growth retardation, prematurity and congenital anomalies. Apart from clinical history, physical examination, chromosomal analysis and biochemical testing, neuroimaging also plays a vital role in the etiological profiling of these developmentally delayed children. The yield of neuroimaging is highly variable, ranging from 9 to 80%. However, the yield of neuroimaging study increases when it is done in the presence of specific problems such as microcephaly, seizure disorder or focal neurological deficit. The frequency of normal MR brain was higher in older age group. This is probably because the children with uh, developmental delay are identified more frequently when they are younger and probably evaluated earlier. Also, some findings such as delayed myelination are recognized in younger children and normalizes later on in life. After evaluating the, evaluating the MRI findings, we segregated the features and divided them into various etiologies as described. Out of 62, 62 who clinically presented with uh, global developmental delay, 21 children presented with periventricular leukomalacia, 18 children presented with uh, encephalomalacia, 15 children presented with corpus callosum dysgenesis, 5 children presented with Dardy Walker malformation, 5 children presented with pachygyria, 12 children presented with leukodystrophy, 33 children presented with delayed myelination, 15 children presented with isolated atrophic changes, three children presented with infection-associated changes, and 29 children presented with hydrocephalus. In conclusion, MRI evaluation of brain contributes to the process of diagnosis of etiologies of developmental delay. Developmental delay has wide spectrum of etiology ranging from normal to abnormal. MRI study of brain helps the clinician in proper diagnosis, leading to appropriate treatment, and also helps in parent counseling. Thank you.